Alrighty, what is up everybody? So in this video we are going to talk about how you can create these NFTs. And yes, I am on the Pudgy Penguins page because this is a good example of what I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can create. Now, later on we're going to talk about how you can actually get these onto a marketplace like Rarible, OpenSea, or Atomic Hub depending on what network you want to use. But right out of the gate, let's talk about what you're going to need to do to start with right so what is pudgy penguins so pudgy penguins is an nft that is randomly generated through lines of code and then it uses another code through erc 721 contracts and solidity programming i know that sounds extremely complicated i am not a coder or programmer in the slightest bit so that should give you a bit of ease if you know nothing about coding if you do know coding if you know javascript and solidity uh, python that's extremely extremely going to work to your benefit, but if you don't know any of that, this video is definitely for you. So right off the bat, Pudgy Penguins is compiled of essentially the same thing you're going to need, which is varying layers, right? So here we have backgrounds, say backgrounds 1 through 10 being the color in the background, yellow, blue, purple, uh, red, and so on and so forth, right? So those are layers. The next layer you have is the actual penguin itself, which you can see is the same penguin design throughout all okay and then you have other layers such as headgear you have uh, clothing such as the bow tie or sweaters a kimono or a t-shirt and then you have eyewear right eyewear shows uh, either glasses or a different eye expression uh, like that and then you have facial wear as well so all of these are just different layers that have been compiled by code now these were uh, generally hand drawn on a program like uh, photoshop or a paint program and then put into code where they're generated right so the first thing you need to do is think of your concept and then inside of your concept you need to think of the many different layers that you're going to need before we actually get into generating them you're going to need your layers so number one think of your concept number two think of all the different layers that are going to go into that concept all right so real quick what you're looking at right here and i'm sorry i know it's dark in the background um, but what you really need to see is on the screen so if you don't have photoshop or you don't want to pay for any program you can use something called my paint just google my paint download you can get it on any system that you're running and it's a completely free program that you can create your layers as you can see we have a spear right here and this is just something that i'm working on uh, for my own nft collection which if you're subscribed to the channel and you're following I'm going to actually be dropping some of my nfts to subscribers for free right on launch day right so you have to work out things such as do you want to drop a thousand five thousand ten thousand nfts it really doesn't matter how many you want to drop because once you get these layers going I can pop another one on here like a headdress um, once you get these layers going it's really easy to compile them now we are going to be using code to do that that, but I'll tell you exactly everything you need and I promise I didn't know coding at all this is going to be very easy for you to adapt to but I just wanted to throw that out there when you're making your layers a free program like my paint which is super simple super straightforward will accomplish everything you need it to do Okay, so because we are going to be using some programming, we are going to be writing a little bit of code or modifying code, if you will. Uh, the code that I'm going to show you, I've actually messed with a bit, um, but we're actually going to grab something off of GitHub. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Um, but the first thing you do need is Node.js. Okay, so Node.js is going to allow you to access this code, so you can go and navigate to Node.js and download that for the system that you are running on. Alrighty, so now that you have that, again I apologize, I know it's dark in the background for my actual camera here, you're going to go to the link that is in the description below. Now this code was wrote by someone named Hashlips, and if you want to actually code along and write this entire code um, side by side with Hashlips like I did, um, you can do that, you can search on YouTube for Hashlips NFT Generator uh, and you can code along with him. If you don't want to write any of the code yourself, the link is in the description. All you're going to do is this right here is going to be the base code, right? This is your, your 
Boilermaker code and you're going to go to code and you're going to download zip. Now once you download the zip, just extract it. You can use something for free, uh, either a WinZip free trial or you can get pzip, P-E-A-Z-I-P, pzip. Uh, that is what I use for everything. It's completely free. There's no trial expiration and you can extract that file anywhere on your computer. And then we're actually going to open this file inside of uh, Microsoft, or not, yeah, Visual Studio Code or VS Code uh, that we just downloaded. So let's go ahead and hop over to that. Okay, so here we are inside of Visual Studio Code. This is what you're going to see when you first open it. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually grab the file. So we're going to go to File, Open Folder, and then wherever you had it stored. For me, it is in Windows, Users, Acon and I'm gonna go down here you can see I have a bunch and we are looking for generative art node main which is what it's going to uh, basically save itself under so we're gonna select folder and that is gonna open this code inside of uh, inside of Visual Studio so let me go ahead and minimize some of those now I know this looks really complicated but what we're gonna do if this is your first time opening it we are gonna go terminal new terminal and that's gonna open this window down here on the bottom that you see now there's a couple things that we have to do okay the first one is we have to if you're doing uh, this for the very first time which I'm assuming you are you are going to need to do npm install Okay, and what that is going to do is basically take Node.js and it's going to install it so you can utilize it in your coding, right? Once you do that, it's going to take about 30 to 60 seconds to actually fully load into your system. But once you have it, you have it. And anytime in the future you want to do any coding, you will just do npm init or npm initiate and that's basically going to give you this folder over here called node modules now that's a bunch of stuff that you really don't need to know if you just do npm install you are good you don't need to worry about that node modules okay the next thing we need is something called truffle now when we're making a file we have to actually compile this file so we can then save it right so the code for that is going to be npm install truffle dash g right so once you've done npm install you then want to do npm install truffle dash g and then you run that and you are good to go you then have node.js and you have truffle now if you are someone that is um, you know you know what you're doing with coding you can also use brownie uh, or hard hat to do the same thing i know that's foreign to many of you but for this we're going to use truffle all right, so we have all of our dependencies installed to our terminal. Now it's time to actually get down to the nitty gritty of it. So as you can see, I am making tiki's over here on input. Input is gonna be where we store our layers. Now, anytime you want to upload something to those layers, if you go and let me actually see if I can show you this uh, let's go window capture and it is not going to let me look at my file explorer so the file under generative art node main that you had uh, let me put this back here so basically this folder that we opens uh, generative art node you can see the main thing right here generative art node that folder wherever you saved it on your computer if you open that folder and then open the input folder you can then start creating your layers so what you're seeing on the left side here in input input is a folder inside of this main generative art node main and inside of the input folders we have all of these different folders where we have our backgrounds all right, so if I load, uh, let's see, there we go. If I load these, you'll see all of the different backgrounds that I have, so on and so forth. You can see the different headpieces that I have created, and all of these were created inside of my paint, right? So once you have all of your layers created, you have this uh, code studio downloaded, you're basically just going to go into your folders and add these different layers into your folder. Now, a lot of this code that you see on here, you're already going to have 
have because we essentially just cloned that GitHub folder from Hashlips, right? So what I'm going to do here is actually show you what you need to go in and change in order to generate these images. And let me show you real quick. If I go down here and I type node index.js, right? So what I'm doing right now is I am telling my node to run this index.js file that you see on the left side. Okay, and once I run that, let's go ahead and run it. Now I have it set to create 10 unique additions. Okay, so what these additions, these additions are gonna go into output and I'm not going to click on them just because I don't want anyone to steal my ideas before I have fully minted them, but you can see that it created 10 unique images. Now I can set that number to 500, 5000, or 10,000, and it will pump or dump all of these new and generated images based on all of these layers we have provided this code. It will then create these new images for us. And like I said, we can do this up to 10,000 times. We can do it a hundred thousand times but eventually it's going to start making duplicates right and that's not what we want we want ten thousand unique images okay so we have everything set up now theoretically on your side you should have this open you should have all of your layers and now we get to the fun part so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our config.js file that is inside of this input Okay, so we're gonna go config.js and it will open this and yours should look exactly like this. Now real quick, I do wanna cover this right here. Now all this is saying is if you wanna make rarities, like original, rare, super rare, you are going to save your file at the end with underscore sr for super rare so what does that look like so you can see this says tiki top 4.png if i wanted this to be super rare i would name this tiki top 4 underscore sr.png now you can feel free to mess around in this you can change this to anything that you want um, i could even copy this line, paste another one, paste it as many times as I want with different rarities, and it's just gonna kick out those rarities as long as I am saving my file with the corresponding key. So if the key on this image has nothing, it's an original. If this was tiki top four underscore R, that would be a rare attribute or a rare layer. If I did it with underscore SR, it would then be super rare or really anything you wanna plug in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to this right here where you see const layers equals. Now this is going to be the bulk of everything and all you're wanting to do is name this line right here, name, should correspond to the input file. So you'll see I have this name is background, this name is Tiki Base, this name is Tiki Eyes, and this is basically how you want your NFT or your image to be layered. So I want the background to come first, then I want the base or the body, then the eyes, then the lips, and then the nose. Okay, so you want to make sure that your name corresponds to the file that it's going to be grabbing it because when the code runs and it comes across this line, it's going to say, okay, where am I grabbing this layer from and what layer am I grabbing? Okay, well, I'm grabbing Tiki Base from the Tiki Base file. You also want to make sure that location. So this over here, this whole thing is your directory. So the location that it is grabbing this image from is in your directory and it's in the file named Tiki Base. Okay, so if you were doing uh, CryptoPunks or Pudgy Penguins, this would be Penguin Base, Penguin Base, Penguin Base. So you want to make sure that your name, location, and elements all say the same thing. Capitalization matters. Okay, so it has to be the same thing. You want to make sure that your position is zero and your uh, your X is zero, your X axis and your Y axis are both set to zero. And I should cover that when you're creating your layers, you need to do them a thousand by a thousand pixels. 
okay and i can't stress that enough or your layers are going to be off you want them to be set a thousand by a thousand pixels now as many layers as you want all you have to do is basically copy this entire section change the id to plus one so as you can see i have seven different layers and each layer is going to have 10 to 15 unique assets inside of it okay so again you don't need any coding knowledge we're just modifying a code that hashlips has so graciously put out for everyone now everything in here i coded alongside of him but it will look the same on your screen other than these elements so when you first get this this is going to be like hashlips base uh, hashlips color hashlips you know you're just going to modify this and change it to what you need it you can delete them um, if you want to if you ever want to pause one you just highlight it and hit Control k c and what that does is that basically comments out that line of code so this code is going to run but now it's going to run without layer 7 okay alternatively you can Control k u and bring it right back into the mix okay so the next thing we want to look at is index.js now basically this right here let me look through um, this is going to be yeah this is going to be ready to go for you uh, there's only one thing that you need to change in this entire entire index.js file and that is right here addition equals my args length zero number this right here is how many additions you want to print so if i just want to print one addition me save that change if I run node index.js it will create one edition if I change it to five and I run node index oops, node index.js it will then create five and every time this runs I want you to kind of picture what this is doing whenever I do node index.js it is telling index.js to run now when index.js runs it is running off of the config.js file which gives us layers width and height okay it is also loading the images that we have for creating our canvas okay so config.js index.js the only thing you need to change is this right here to how many you want to print config.js you just need to tell it what layers go where and do what and you just need to upload the input files that you want to use to layer your NFT. And there you go. You should have as many unique NFTs as you want. Now, when it comes to uploading these to OpenSea, I spent in one week 65 hours attempting to learn Solidity Coding ERC721 contracts and basically blockchain development uh, and I failed miserably I ran into so many errors um, I literally spent 65 hours in one week hitting a brick wall and not getting anywhere so if you're good with coding and programming you can create an ERC 721 contract you can do your solidity coding and get it right on to OpenSea, but you will have to pay a gas fee. The other way, which is the route I'm probably going to go, is you can use something called a macro scheduler. Literally, it's called macro scheduler, and you can set that up to basically drag an image, fill out the files based on an Excel sheet that you have, and that will just one by one upload these images for you to OpenSea or wherever you want. Way number three, of course, is the old-fashioned way Go to uh, OpenSea or go wherever you want to mint and create each NFT one by one by one. However, if you're wanting to create 10,000 NFTs, the current going rate on Fiverr is about $2,500. So this video right here should save you that $2,500 with a few simple steps. If this did help, hit that thumbs up button, hit a subscribe button. I love you all and I'll see you on the next video.